Tracks on Wednesdays. Uh, this week I am really still into uh, that mode of going back and forth uh, with both areas of fluid painting with uh, acrylics and also comparing that with encaustic. So I'm really I'm getting painting while the wax is in a fluid state and see what can happen that way. So it's been a really exciting process and I'm gonna keep it very fluid and just observe the movement. Uh, this week I'm going to use some oil paint sticks and uh, these are R&F. They come in several different brands. Today I'm using R&F um, in various states of use here. This one, um, this is how they come in a stick and uh, I have some little nubs in different colors, some raw sienna and some uh, turquoise blue and I'm just gonna go with some uh, blues and browns. And also I had a uh, request last, last week's post or on one of the weeks, another of the fluid painting uh, videos for encaustic of what would happen if I dropped some ink in while the uh, while the wax was fluid. So I also have uh, thought that was kind of exciting. So I also have this uh, India ink, and this one is copper uh, copper plate gold, and it's uh, Dr. Philip Martin's. And I will post all of the supplies that I use today on the blog with a link or a picture. Uh, to the actual item so you can easily find it and uh, and know what I used in this video But I thought this would be fun to use sort of a metallic accent and see what happens when the ink is dropped in the fluid the fluid uh, wax there So I have an 8x8 cradle board I've taped off the edges of the board and I've given this about two three coats of uh, ink, white encaustic medium and let it cool just a little bit, still warm to the touch. And heat them up and uh, move them around while they're completely uh, fluid and melted and moving and just see what happens. And I'm also, I think in the last few videos for the uh, fluid encaustic painting, I've used a torch. And uh, for this one, I'm gonna use a heat gun and see how that also differs uh, the movement of the wax.
matches perfectly. This uh, iridescent gold pigment stick almost matches the uh, copper plate gold India ink almost perfectly. They're almost the same exact shade, so it blends really well with that. Okay, so I've moved it around pretty much all. I'm going to move it. I'm gonna stick with this composition uh, predominantly here, but I think I'm gonna add some dimension to this piece, which is the great thing also about encaustic is that you can add texture and dimension. And I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of dry brush up here at the top. And I might smear the ink just a little bit, if that's okay. created some craters here and that happens sometimes when you use India ink I actually think the ink gets hotter uh, than the wax and sort of uh, sinks down to the wood and uh, pushes away the wax which creates these craters here and if you don't bother them uh, sitting there they'll eventually dry but if you do uh, go over them a little bit a lot of times with a brush or or melt them too much they actually uh, push away the wax and go down to the wood there. So they're still gold, but it's sunk down into the wood and uh, and created these sort of craters there in the wax. And so I just kind of went with it and did um, some really nice dry brush texture with that black. It takes quite a few minutes uh, to build it up, so you have to have some patience. But I uh, built up some texture here around here and then ended with some drips and uh, then just very lightly fused it in so I didn't get rid of that uh, texture. And I'm gonna get, add a little highlight to that now to make it pop out, but I'm gonna let it cool down here for just a second. Okay, so I actually wanna make this uh, little raised area texture just kind of pop out and, uh, and be noticed here that it is texture so you can see it from a little bit of a distance. And for this, I'm gonna add, um, this is some a new uh, medium that I've been trying out with the wax and I want to give a, a shout out to Sadie Kern uh, for using this in the uh, workshop uh, I did over the weekend. Uh, she used this, uh, the Antique Bronze Pearl X Powder and we've been using these in the work in the live workshops and some in some different ways and playing around with the Pearl X powders and uh, she did a raised black drip technique uh, with this, with the uh, antique bronze powder and it really brought out that black. So I wanna give a shout out to Sadie and try it here on all this black texture. So Sadie used it in the workshop on some drips that she did, some black dripped dots, and the Pearl X powder just really brought them out and highlighted them in a beautiful way. 
on top of the black. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. So I'm going ahead and using it on my dry brush texture. And I did this on another piece and really liked it. I might be hooked on this Pearl X powder. Faces merchant change by your face remain. piece with the fluid painting in the background and that's okay uh, it makes encaustic so exciting abstract painting so exciting is you never know which direction uh, it's gonna take and you just kind of go with the flow and see what happens and uh, this I this is kind of really cool it almost reminds me of uh, land, like an aerial view of, of land and uh, of the earth and possibly even uh, Florida and uh, with the ocean in the background so it's kind of cool and and playing with a bunch of techniques this week and just seeing what worked and what didn't so I still like the I still like the India ink the gold India ink and I actually love it when the craters happen so I actually uh, try to do them on purpose a lot of times when doing the shellac burns with the India ink just to try to create some veining um, these actually are more craters than, than veining, but it still had a really cool effect and just went with it and added the uh, raised texture to it. So the craters were already created, so I just kind of went with that and created the rest of the raised texture around it just to enhance that effect even further. And sometimes when things happen and they're unexpected, you want to work with it as opposed to working against it and it ends up coming out uh, better than you'd planned. So, and definitely a lot different than you'd planned, but usually, uh, usually if you listen to what's going on and follow that, it can come out um, really kind of cool. So, so I went ahead and finished the sides of this piece and I think I'm going to put this one up on Etsy later this afternoon. I never put them up when everybody wonders what happens to them when they're gone and they're uh, for sale in my studio, but um, I don't put them online a lot. So I'm gonna um, put a few online here and, uh, and let you guys have a chance at them. So I'm gonna put this one uh, up in my Etsy store. So I will leave a link for my Etsy store in the comment, in the comment section below. And I hope you enjoy these techniques. And if you are enjoying Wax on Wednesdays, then please uh, like and subscribe to this channel. And feel free to leave comments in uh, the comment section below. Also, if you're enjoying Wax on Wednesdays, you may want to join, join the uh, Wax on Wednesday project group on Facebook. It opened on June 7th, and we're having a lot of fun in there, um, posting 
I'm trying out the techniques in Wax on Wednesdays and you can post your pictures uh, when you give these techniques a try and uh, talk with everybody else in the group and also ask all the questions that you want to ask me. So I hope you guys had fun and see you next Wednesday. Bye.